What in this instance would you be advising Paula Broadwell to do today in light of this information? I would be advising Paula to take the exact same action that her um, excellent counsel has told her to take, and that is to stay, stay quiet, don't make any public statements, because what you have to keep in mind here is there's still an ongoing criminal investigation. And unlike any of the other players in this scandal, Paul is really the only one that's potentially facing federal criminal charges. And the cardinal rule of a defense case is just don't let your client talk to the media. And so I think that she's following the advice of her excellent counsel. I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but as soon as this thing broke, she went uh, to DC and hired the firm of Monica, Lewin Monica Lewinsky's previous firm. So she definitely uh, is, is, is handling the case pretty well at this point. And, and I had to laugh in the, in the piece there, the former FBI agent saying, yeah, don't worry, we're just asking a few questions, probably nothing to worry about. That's frankly, uh, I don't think that's true. Mm -hmm. I think she has a lot to worry about. And so, like you say, you gotta take care of the criminal aspect first before you worry about your image because you gotta make sure you come through. It, it's very important and you know they are investigating her and we've already determined that she does have classified information and obviously she's going to say well I had security clearance therefore I was permitted to have this classified information most likely not at her home but um, that really isn't a major offense and so if that is the extent of the violation you're probably not going to see a prosecution against her but there still is the internet harassment claims against with the with the emails that she sent to Jill Kelly yeah but anytime you mix you know as you say, maybe it's a minor criminal offense, wouldn't be a big deal, but mm -hmm. this, is, this has become a big political scandal, and so this is where sort of uh, prosecutors and politicians mix, and anything's possible. That, that is correct, and so again, the best thing that she can do is just stay quiet and in some ways take a, take a back seat and let the story turn to Jill Kelly, which is what we're seeing happening. Instead, the media is focusing on Jill Kelly as opposed to focusing on Paula Broadwell, which is great for Paula, both um, with her public image as well as with her um, criminal investigations. Well, I was about to ask, uh, with everyone securing different attorneys, you say uh, Paula Broadwell has secured Monica Lewinsky's attorney. Mm -hmm. We know that Jill Kelly or her sister have hired Gloria Allred. In this type of situation where now you have four or five, six different players, um, it, it, do you use a divide and conquer, divide and conquer strategy? Um, how do you pit parties against one another to benefit your own client? Well, I think that the best thing, what you're seeing is everyone has their own interests here. Um, and even though we have attorneys being hired potentially by the Kelly camp, they really don't need them. They need PR more than they need attorneys because no one's asserting any kind of illegal action going on with Jill Kelly. Uh, instead, she's kind of really botched her PR in this situation. You have an entire country looking at her as the other, other woman, and um, she's becoming the villain in the situation, when in all actuality, she's the victim. She was the victim of the crime. She was the one receiving the harassing messages, which then turned into this huge scandal and criminal investigation. She needs to get out there and remind people um, I'm, a, I'm a servant to the community. I donate all my time to these military families. I'm receiving these frightening, threatening, harassing emails. And uh, she, should, she should be reframing Didn't how she? the public's seeing her. Didn't she, though? Didn't Jill Kelly bring some of this on? I mean, uh, let's face it, in politics, we all know women like Jill Kelly. Some of us know women like Paula Broadwell. Uh, didn't she bring some of this on? I mean, they're now looking at 25,000 to 30,000 pages of emails that were flirtatious in nature, perhaps sexual in nature, sent to a general who really should be focused on a word. Did Jill Kelly not bring some of this on herself? I think she's a social climber, but I think Jill Kelly made the same mistake that people across America make, and they don't realize that what you put down in an email is the same as putting it on a public forum. We have outdated privacy laws. The um, Electronic Communication Privacy Act was uh, enacted in 1986, obviously way before we got to the advent of the email and social media and text messaging. And I think she wrote all those emails and never thought that um, we would be looking at them someday. And so I don't know if she necessarily brought it upon herself. Sure, she's a social climber, but there's something wrong with that. You're saying it's worse to be the other other woman instead of the other woman? I'm saying that I'm just trying to <laughs> you shouldn't be any of those women. Okay. That's my opinion. You good. shouldn't um, be a woman yeah. at all. That <laughs> but I think that she should get in front of the story and explain that she is not the other other woman, she, that she hasn't had an affair. She should get out there and explain her side of the story. Cause 
if you look at the actual facts of what's going on, she's got a great she's got a great platform to get out there and um, and clear her name.